All right, everyone, you're in for a treat because we get to join runner Hepanwana on an adorably electrifying adventure as they take us through a speed run of Elekhead. Good luck. Thank you. Um, so I am Hepanwana, and we're going to be playing some Elekhead. Elekhead is a cool little retro puzzle platformer. Uh, came out last year. You play a little robot guy who is electric. Uh, one thing I like to do is find a reason to donate a little extra money. So during this run, I'm going to die at least about four times, maybe five times if everything goes good. But I might die extra, so I'm going to donate $5 for every death I have. And I invite anyone join in, who, uh, donate whatever you feel able to. Uh, it might go as bad as 20 deaths. Uh, so it's a good way to bring a little extra money. Let's keep that donation total going. So, to start this run, I am going to delete my save, and go time will be once it loads into the game. So, we're going to delete my save game right here, and I'll tell you about the game as we go along. So, go time is in about three or so seconds. Let's see, it is ready, set, go. So, in a Leckhead, you are this cool little robot guy, a Leckhead. Your head is electric. You might be thinking, well, if your head's electric, doesn't that mean your body's electric? Well, eventually we're going to separate our body and our head, but not quite yet. Instead, for right now, our head and body are together. Anything that your head touches, including your body, will be electrified. And anything that is electrified touching anything else that's electrified will be electrified. So these traps, for example, will light up when I hit them with electricity. You'll notice I just grabbed a collectible. During this run, alternate end, we want to collect 20 collectibles out of 20. It is not 100%. 100% you also collect color palette changes, of which the game starts you with three different color palettes. I love the pink and blue. It is trans uh, pride colors. I love that. Seems very appropriate. As we go through, we're going to have a bunch of different puzzles we are trying to solve. However, if you've already solved them before, you're just going to blast through them. Big challenge in this game is precision jumps, as well as being, um, being cognizant of what rooms are coming up, because there are a lot of rooms to memorize. This game just keeps moving. It is very fast. You'll also notice there are checkpoints as we go along. Those checkpoints are um, helpful. If you die, you go back to a checkpoint. You also, like right there, by the way, $5 right there that I'm going to donate for that death. Um, however, checkpoints can also be problematic. How could they be problematic? Well, if you grab a checkpoint and you don't want to go back to that one, if it's too much backtracking, that could be a problem. I skipped that checkpoint right back there on that last screen because we are going to take an intentional death to go here. It's all about going fast. We don't want to backtrack. Also, you might notice there are puzzles where there are chains, for example, down there that are electrified. Um, if I hit the right platforms, I want to avoid those so I don't set off traps. Sometimes you can take a look, see what they are. Sometimes you have to memorize them. I need to memorize all of them. We also come across these portals. These portals are pretty cool. Uh, they let you teleport back to them whenever you want. They're kind of like a checkpoint, but you don't go back to them automatically when you die. Um, you'll also notice I just reached checkpoint or portal number two back there. Where was portal number one? We're not going to see portal one. Uh, it is a cool thing that in this game, there are three main categories. There is any percent, there is a harm percent, and there is alternate end. Alternate end is kind of the middle uh, category of those. And so in alternate end, we're going to see checkpoints two, three, four, five, six, and a bonus question mark one. You see the same ones in a harm percent. In any percent, you only see two and one. So right there, we grab the only power up in this game. We can now throw our head. Remember how I said our head is electric? Well, that is what it's all about right there. I just made a horrible, horrible mistake by... You'll notice when we have one of these little 
trinkets following us, if we don't collect it before hitting a checkpoint, it will reset. One of the cool things on this game is checkpoints will reset the world. That's why a checkpoint could be a good thing or a bad thing. And by checkpoints resetting the world, if you have a collectible following you and you did not quite get it yet, it will go back to where it came from. Or if you collect one of these little cards that will open a door, hit a checkpoint, the card will go back where it came from and the door will reset to being closed. So checkpoints, they're a great thing and they're kind of a problematic thing. If you're wondering how to tell a difference between the collectibles that I need 20 of and the key cards that I don't need 20 of, uh, I just need one per room when they show up to open a door. The ones that are pink, which are my electric color, are the ones that are uh, collectibles. The ones that are the blue, which is my non-electric color, are the key cards. So we are now entering area three. Area three um, introduces some cool little clips, like right there, you could throw your head through there, speed run strap, instead of trying to lower that platform the traditional way. Big thing in this game is it is all about trying to manage your electricity while also making sure you keep your head. I mean, that's saying we all want to do in life is keep our head about us. And so right here, we are going to go on this platform, cool little speed run trick, hit that right uh, wall there, jump all the way up. Once the platform goes down, throw your head and you're actually going to skip a little bit of a puzzle. Here you'll see a lot of checkpoints. We want to avoid those because we want to grab this key card. It'll open that door in the upper left of that last room. And now if we avoid touching these checkpoints while electrified, we will not reset the room. Otherwise, we will reset everything. And that is problematic for everyone. So here, get rid of our head. And you'll see there is a timer on our body when it doesn't have our head. That timer is how long before we run out of juice and explode. Just like in real life, exploding. You don't really want to do that. Exploding is bad news for everyone. So, you know, try to avoid exploding whenever possible. Other cool thing on this game, pay attention to any time that anything is drawn that is unique, that stands out as not being required. For example, this gap right there. If there is something that it doesn't look like it's required to be drawn or should be completed, there is a reason for it. So here we're going to throw our head, get that platform moving out, get our head on top of it, and this way our head will bring the platform out to where our body can get to it. There is a lot of stuff where it is all about just maintaining kind of a feel of where your head and body can work together without like, oh no, essentially losing your head about things. This game really does make you think things through and truth be told, when playing casual, this game is a lot slower, it takes a lot more time, it's some real good puzzles. Sadly, some of the best puzzles in game, the hardest ones, you won't even see uh, playing through here. I jump there because you fall at a set speed that increases for a certain amount of time until you reach terminal velocity, and I wanted to save a little time, so we jump down to avoid that first platform. Here we are going to have a similar puzzle what we saw before, but we want to keep our head with, up, uh, with us this time. But if you jump up here, find a collectible. There is a checkpoint right after this transition that we want to avoid, so the collectible will not reset to where it was, or else we will lose a lot of time right there. We will continue on, and we're going to reach checkpoint number four coming up. Um, Charbunny, if you have anything to announce, it's a good time right now. Absolutely, we've actually had a few donations coming in. We had a $100 donation from Buzzer Yum Yum, who says, have fun, good luck, <laughs> and save the frames. 
We also had a $5 donation come in from Anonymous. And with that, by the way, chat, we have more than doubled what we raised during Fast Pace for Headspace back in November. Fast Pace for Headspace raised $3,791 and we are already at $7,782.77. So thank you again, everyone, for this incredible outpouring of support and generosity. Amazing. By the way, Buzzer Yum Yum is my partner and she does a wonderful job supporting me anytime I do speed running. So thank you so much. And once again, if you see St. Drawn, that was actually a gap in the floor that you would fall into and die. Okay, that was an intentional death right there. Our head is slightly attracted to us. I am having a little bit of bad luck right here. There we go. Uh, it's all about trying to keep your head without losing it in all the wrong places. But you have this. It is amazing seeing how good of an outpouring there is for charity for this. I am amazed to see how great everyone is. This is truly an amazing event. Um, you'll see in the bottom right a little thing drawn in. Once again, this game, if they ever draw anything in, it is a hint that you are meant to find a secret. You don't need to find the secrets to beat the game, but if you want to get the fun endings, you definitely do. Uh, the regular ending to the game has you pretty much go back to the very beginning of the entire game, and we're not wanting that. Here we lose our head because see there are turrets on the right. If we are electrified, those turrets would turn on. We'd grab that key and never be able to get back, which that'd be bad news, you know, just pretty much end up losing our life and having donate five extra dollars, which that's not a bad thing, but we want to keep on rolling. Five dollars there though for intentional death on a checkpoint we're going to try a speed run strat here it's going to be very close so right here you're intended to throw your head up activate that trap to kill those fireballs i'm hoping i barely got through here just in time and barely got through that is about a three or four frame window for that trick it is very tight and here we are going to go down into checkpoint five. Area five is interesting because it has more collectibles than anywhere else. It also has mini games that we need to complete. So we'll throw our head, activate that portal. We will go back to that portal later. Right now, we need a mini game. We need slots. I hate slots on games, tell the truth. But we need to play some slots. So right here, we are going to play some slots and we want to get a collectible, which we get right here. Throw our head, make sure we collect our head before teleporting to the checkpoint. And now we're going to go to a NERM mini game. This one takes about 30 seconds. If there is anything else you'd want to announce, Char Bunny, it is a great time. Awesome. First thing I want to say is this run is fantastic, so I am in with you. I will also be matching your $5 per death donation, and chat, I encourage any of you who also are finding this run impressive to join us in that. I'd also like to say that with all the donations coming in, we're actually less than $100 away from meeting our next incentive, which is that Discworld Rinse Wind cosplay. We are at $412.77 out of a needed $500. Chat, please, this cosplay is really fun. It's a wizard, it's dramatic, it's really epic, it matches the tone of the game really well if you haven't seen it. Um, so please, maybe consider donating toward that one. I think it's going to be fantastic. Back to Wonderful. you. Wonderful. All right, so we just did that mini game. The whole point of that mini game was if you collect um, for every 10, you unlock one little doorway to get a collectible, and we wanted, obviously, all three of those collectibles, because we are trying to get everything collected in this, all 20 of them. You'll see why we need 20 coming up. We'll throw our head now, because we want to make this bridge, jump up, grab that. If we did not throw our head and we jumped up, we would destroy that bridge and we would fall to our doom. That would be bad news all around. Once again, if you look, you could go the upper left. If you can go somewhere, this game wants you to go there. That's where secrets are. 
we'll throw our heads so we could get that collectible a little quicker because there is a checkpoint right here. I like to grab it for safety for marathon strats. One, two, three, jump, a one, jump. And now we will continue here where we will watch manipulation using an active checkpoint. You hit an active checkpoint, it will reset the room, but not yourself or your head. So your head will fall down just a little bit earlier. Throw our head into that platform to move it out and rinse and repeat. We'll go back up here. We've got some other cool little puzzles coming up here like if you activate that TV screen, it'll tell you to throw your head up. And if you do so, you will go up there. So you might tell in that last room, there were some platforms. Like I said, nothing is made in this game if it doesn't have a purpose. That has a purpose right there to get you a collectible. And we are nearly at those 20 out of 20. So we are going to throw our head there, activate this. Normally you could throw your head to avoid the fireballs, but it will slow down that platform. Instead you do it that way and you only have to deal with one round of fireballs. Throw our head and this way we can land on that middle set of platforms. There's a lot of unique uh, strats in this game where you have to figure out how slow your head will fall, how quick your head will fall, how to manipulate your head falling. Here we need to go under there. We're too tall with our head, so we reset the platform. And now the challenge mode of that same exact puzzle, but instead this time, we want to be able to get that bridge going at the end of the series of platforms so we could get up here this game playing through it casually the puzzles are amazing playing through it as a speed run the puzzles are an extra level of precision and challenge that really just makes this a lot of fun it's a really great game i can't recommend it enough uh the designers are very friendly to the speedrun community uh they have updated the game to make it where it's quicker to reset the game quicker to see uh what your final time is it is amazing the type of support that the developers have had uh for this game it says six and up what does that mean do we see a six anywhere oh now we do maybe i'll reset the room and now we get our head. If we did not do that when it uh, said six, our head would have landed on spikes and that would have been bad news. Here is a fun two room challenge puzzle. Uh, multi room puzzles are a really cool thing in this game because you really have to think without being able to fully see what you're looking at. We are now approaching work point number six. We are not going to check out any of Area 6. We are instead going to go up here and say enough is enough. We're going to throw our head up there and teleport to Area Question Mark. We are also approaching the end of the game. Two final uh, collectibles. This one, we don't want to fall in those spikes, so we'll grab it and teleport right back here. And now a three room puzzle. This is going to push the battery life of our body to its absolute limits. We are barely going to get out of here with the collectible. And now why did we need, whoa, okay, I accidentally hit down. That was a boo-boo, but it's all good. Why did we need 20 collectibles for this door? By the way, Char Bunny, it's a walking area. So if you have anything else, now is a great time. Awesome, we had a $5 donation come in from Firebird Lover who says, I have been a huge fan of Heppenwana for a while now. From his epic beer to his amazing gameplay, he is just perfect. Love watching this lovely game in a marathon tonight. Thank you so much for that very sweet donation, Firebird Lover. Thank you, awesome. Firebird Lover. We just want to say our donation total is also pretty cool right now at $7,787.77. So thank you everyone for keeping these numbers interesting. So time is coming up really soon. So we want to go up five screens. This is number four and we don't want to go up five. So time is coming in three, two, one time. That there, you're wondering what just happened. If you ride the platform all the way up, thank you for the beard love, by the way. There is the MacGuffin, a final thing. You need to throw your battery head into that will create this for better or worse 
So at this point, we can hit start and skip the credits. Normally I love to show credits, but we're speed running. We want to keep on time. So we're going to hit start, skip the credits and see what our final time in terms of SRC leaderboards, what it would be. Also how many decks, like I said, I'm donating $5 per deck. Anyone who wants to join in, $5 is great. $1 is great. Whatever you could donate. And if you can't donate, that's great too. Just showing love and support is fantastic. That's nine deaths. 1749 is a really good time. This was a really good run. 20 out of 20 collectibles. Three out of, I believe it's 10 for the palettes. In 100%, um, you get all of the color palettes as well. And when I said I'm donating $5 per death, I lied. I did I did too good. I'm going to donate 10 per death because I want to donate more than $45. I was counting on doing a little bit more. Thank you everyone for watching, for joining. This has been an amazing marathon I've been watching all weekend. I am so excited to see where it goes from here. I never got to uh, personally meet or interact with the only kid, but I got to see the amazing hospitality, friendship, just positivity that the only kid brought to the Sonic speedrun community and just to speedrun communities and online communities in general. So I am just really proud that I was given a chance to be a part of this to celebrate such an amazing positive influence in this world so thank you very much for having me and nothing but love for all of you thank you very much wow can we get again one more virtual round of applause for the fantastic electron and absolutely wonderfully sweet comments that we just got from the wonderful hepanwana thank you again everyone this was really fun i hope you enjoyed it too